things have changed, times have changed, we have new, a new world that we operate within. What are the kinds of things that we actually see from our past that we want to leave behind? And what kind of things do we want to pack in our bag to make sure that we don't lose them, that we can take them forward with us as we face these new challenges? And I think that there's a lot more involved in what we do now that we want to make sure that we're able to keep than it is stuff that we want to unpack and get rid of. I think for the most part, the stuff we want to get rid of are stores that we don't invest in. We want to be good grocers. I think that's something that often has taken a back seat on occasion in our co-ops where we've focused on the social impacts that we want to make in our co-ops. We focus on the relationships we want to build with our producers. But we forget that we're grocers and we want to be good grocers. We want to make sure that we have bright, inviting stores that are clean and are easy to shop and that people can get their food that they've just purchased into their cars and get it back home. And we occasionally make decisions that make those things really tough on our shoppers. And I'd really like it if we would stop doing that. I think that would be great if we left that behind. But there are things that are really core to what we do. And that co-op structure is the big piece of it. You know, we've talked about differentiation. I've heard that bandied around our tabletops this morning. And we've talked about what makes us different. And the fact is, our co-op structure is something that has value in and of itself. How we own and operate our businesses is something that's special. Uh, the products that we offer are available in a lot of different places now. But that doesn't mean that we have become irrelevant. We're only irrelevant if we don't actually work the structure that makes us special. Because the fact is, uh, how many people want to make Kroger richer? <laughs> how many people want to make sure that the Meyer family in Michigan has a little bit more money? <laughs> Is there anyone in this room that's excited about those things? I think we want to make sure that we have communities that are thriving, that we're investing in organizations and in our people and in the folks who shop in our stores. And the way that we do that is by really embracing that structure and understanding that the way we embrace it today may not be the same as the way we embraced it in the past. So we all have, you know, this morning we learned about the core and the mid-level and the periphery, right? And we know we have those core shoppers. Many of us in this room fit that bill. And we know that they're the squeaky wheels. There are lots of folks who will tell us about the things that we shouldn't carry in our stores. There are lots of people who tell us about the kinds of decisions other people ought to be making. I think one of the things that's special about a co-op is that it's really about people serving themselves. It's not about staff serving uh, customers in a way that's devoid of connection from what those shoppers want. It's those shoppers deciding that they want to invest in an organization that's going to be responsive to their needs and that is, if, is frankly going to evolve with them. How many people in this co-op, uh, uh, in this room, were co-op folks back in the 1970s? All right. How many of you drive a minivan? <laughs> How many of you might have a microwave oven now? I mean, I think the fact is that 20 or 30 years ago, we made different choices than we realize we're making today. We've evolved as people. And our shoppers and our members are also evolving. And they're evolving past us at this point. We're all running to catch up uh, right now today. So how do we listen to our members? Used to be a couple hundred people would show up in a room for a membership meeting, right? How many of you have had a member meeting lately where maybe you have 20 staff members and 10 members who show up? OK, thank you for one person who admitted to that. <laughs> but the reality is we've all been in that boat. We've all had those situations where we recognize that what we've always done isn't producing the same results anymore, and that we have to listen to people differently. So we do need to listen to our shoppers. But how are we listening? Uh, one of the things NCG did some consumer research a few years ago, and they recognized 
Uh, they actually went into consumers' homes. These are co-op shoppers. We went into their house, we had our clipboards, and we asked them about the things that they bought. We asked them about what mattered to them and what they love about the co-op. And if you pay attention to what they said on that survey, they all ate all, all organic. They bought local almost 90% of the time. They were really excited about what the co-op does. They bought all their stuff at the co-op. And on the second half of that visit into those consumer homes, they said, can we just peek in your cabinets? And when we slid open that cabinet door, it's like, oh, where's, where's that box of Cheerios come from or those Lucky Charms? Well, you know, there's, there's always a story, right? And the fact is we're messy as people. We're all messy. We all make incongruent decisions. So I think it's really important that we think about how we listen uh, and to really look at it as how do we move from being food fundamentalists to food evangelists? People who go out and get excited and help spread the word about how making cho different choices can help. But unless we can find people, ways to invite people into the conversation that get them excited, that make them feel accepted, and honestly are willing to meet them where they are and not expect them to meet a certain hurdle before they get to that point, it's going to be really tough for us because there are a lot of places they could shop with a lot less baggage. So how can we engage them in those bigger picture values that we have about the changes we want to make in our communities, but also help empower them to know that they can make decisions that they feel comfortable making and that they can move towards something else down the road. I think those are exciting things and it really does embrace our cooperative vision of how to run the world. But it might be a little different than we've done it in the past. Thank you so much.